Welcome to Keepers. I'm Matt Ufford, and this is the fantasy football show for hurricane survivors by hurricane survivors. If you weren't actually in the path of Hurricane Sandy, don't worry, you still technically survived it. Let's get right into things with starts and sits for week nine. Start Dwayne Bowe. In the four games before San Diego's loss to the Browns, the Chargers defense allowed 375 yards of offense per game. One of those games was against these same crappy Chiefs. Give him a start. Sit Chris Johnson. Mm, mm, that feels good to say. CJ's done well against off-field defenses the last few weeks, but the Bears are the league's toughest defense against fantasy RBs, allowing just 8.1 points per game to running backs and only one rush touchdown all year. No thanks. Start Steve Smith. The Redskins are 31st in the league in fantasy points given up to wide receivers, and they've allowed a league-high 18 touchdowns to wideouts. And that's with D'Angelo Hall, who might be suspended. Smith is a great play against a terrible passing defense. On the same note, start Cam Newton. Newton's had a bad go of things against tough defenses like Seattle, Chicago, and Dallas, but he'll bounce back this week. The Redskins have given up 300 yards passing to opposing quarterbacks in all but two games this season. And one of those two is Ben Roethlisberger last weekend, who carved up the skins before the Pittsburgh offense shut down the passing game in the second half. Siddiqui Nix, in three games since returning from injury, he's been kept out of the end zone and has averaged less than 50 yards per game. Add in the fact that the Steelers are among the league's best against fantasy receivers, and I'd look for a better option. Start Denarius Moore. He's emerged as the Raiders' most reliable receiver, and Tampa Bay is a great matchup for him. Only the Redskins and Saints give up more fantasy points to wide receivers than the Bucks. All right, if you don't trust me there, let's look at last week's snake oil in the reality check. Folks, I'll always be straight with you. I gotta be honest, I was pretty amazing last week. I told you to start Willis McGahee, he put up 19 points. I said sit Vernon Davis, who pulled in just two catches for 34 yards, even though Alex Smith went 18 of 19 with three touchdowns. Told you to sell on LaRod Stevens Howling, eight carries for six yards. Oh, and picking up the Dolphins defense, Four sacks, two turnovers, a touchdown, nine points allowed. If there was a blemish last week, it was Josh Freeman keeping his hot hand. We'll get to him later. Right now, it's time for the weather report. Matt, I am in utter shock and awe at the amazing power of nature. My assistant couldn't be here today, and I read from his Twitter verbatim, I'm cold, alone, and at home, with nothing to eat but a can of tuna by candlelight. It's a situation that many people can relate to, but maybe, just maybe, the football could provide a glimmer of light in an otherwise dark, bleak horizon. Back to you. Okay, thanks Isaac. Let's go to the trading block. Bilo and Mike Wallace. He's cooled off since the beginning of the season, totaling just 114 yards and no scores over the last two weeks. But those yards came on 15 catches, so he's getting the targets. Expect him to break free sooner rather than later. Sell high on Josh Freeman. He has great weapons and a relatively soft schedule the rest of the season, but I'm a stubborn ass who gets off on hating players. Even if he continues to play well, I don't think he'll maintain the numbers he's had over the last three weeks, so it's safe to trade him even if you discount my bias. Buy low on Brian Hartline. He all but disappeared after his huge week four at Arizona, but he's got a terrific three-game stretch coming up. Colts, Titans, Bills. I'd take a chance on him. Sell on Heath Miller. Miller has six touchdowns on the year on just 35 receptions. His career high is seven TDs, and that was back in 2007. Even with his more prominent role in Todd Haley's offense, his scoring pace doesn't seem likely to hold up. Could be time to flip him. And as always, we close with hire and fire. Hire Jonathan Dwyer and fire Isaac Redman. I'm a little alarmed that I even have to say this, but the numbers on NFL.com don't lie. Good rule of thumb for fantasy football, own the guy who's starting over the guy who's injured. Hire Nick Foles and fire Jay Cutler. Despite Cutler's easy matchup this weekend, he's averaged less than 130 yards the last two weeks against the Lions and Panthers, not exactly the league's best defenses. He's too unreliable, and he has a stupid face. If your QB is through the bye, I'd pick up Foles and stash him on your roster as Michael Vick's benching looms ever nearer. And at tight end, hire Brandon Myers and fire Jacob Tammy. Even though Tammy plays in the better offense, Myers racks up more yards. He actually has more yards than guys like Vernon Davis, Jared Cook, and Brandon Pettigrew. He just hasn't gotten in the end zone. I wouldn't count on that trend holding up, and I think he's a better bet than a weekly disappointment like Tammy. That's it for this week's Keepers. Your outdoor activity of the week, chopping wood. That's how I got this manly physique. Set your lineups. See you next week. Thank <laughs> you.